when creating your artwork and before you print your film, as a general rule of thumb, bigger and bolder is better. Here's a few tips for type size and line weight. For fonts, if you have a serif font versus a sans serif font, or when you're looking at line weight, I've found with screen printing, you can see in this test print that once you get below 12 or 11 point with a serif font like Bodoni or Garamond, the font actually begins to break and fall apart. But if you use a sans serif font, for example, Helvetica, then you can go down to eight or nine point and it still works well. The same goes for line weights. I would try and keep my lines no smaller than one point. Once you go below one point, the line will start to break apart and you can't expose or print it. After you print your film, you'll take the film to the spray booth outside. You'll be using the toner aid. You'll place your film in the spray booth and then lightly spray multiple passes. As you're spraying the film, let it dry for a few seconds and then reapply. If you spray too hard and you get it too saturated, you're gonna have a problem or issue where the film starts to run. After you print your film, you wanna take it onto the light table and check the density of the black. Now, if you took the toner aid, and in the example, if you oversprayed the black, the powder toner will run and destroy your film. If this happens, then you're gonna to have to reprint the film. After your film is dried from spraying it with the toner aid, take it onto the light table, and then using either India ink and some brushes, or you can use a black Sharpie, look at the density of the film, and then touch up any areas. Areas like these thin lines, you don't have to worry about. Only bold areas, like maybe the body of the insect, or maybe up here, but the wings and all the thin detail you don't need to touch. You're not trying to retrace the artwork, you're just looking for a weakness in the bold, large areas of the black. So depending on how thick the area is, if it's a really large area of black, I can take the India ink and a brush, dip the India ink in, and then just go and turn the light table on. And if you have an area that's weak, I would just go in and just lightly paint so that the black is super dense and rich. Now, if you have a thinner area up here that you're worried about hitting with a thick brush, then you could switch to a Sharpie and take the Sharpie and fill in an area to make sure it's dense and black. The goal is to really have a nice dense black with no light coming through or gray areas in the toner. Once you have this done, then you wanna make sure it's completely dry. You can take it to the hair dryer and hit it for a second and then you're ready to expose. When you're ready to expose and you have your film complete, in the dark room, you will take your screen. This is the inside of the screen. You wanna place the film on the back of your screen. So you'll take your film. This would be considered right reading, and this is the way you want to print. And you'll take the film and you'll flip it and place it on the back of the screen. 
when you position it on the back, take some scotch tape just to hold it in place and you're going to place it on the back. Now make sure when you place the film, you don't need a T-square to get it aligned. You can align it on press. You don't want it too crooked. Also be careful of the frame. You want to make sure that you don't have the film too far up where you're going to get jammed against the metal frame or too far to one side. So a general rule of thumb, maybe four or five inches down so that you can get the squeegee in and do your printing. Before you actually do your exposure, make sure when you flip the screen over that this is right reading. Then you'll take the screen and you'll place it down onto the glass and get it centered. I have a piece of foam that you'll place inside and then I also have a weight and you'll take the weight and the foam and you'll put that on top. The idea is that you want the artwork to be pressed against the glass as tight as possible. The exposure time is 40 seconds and I have a timer in the dark room. You'll turn the light on. You're gonna wait for all the lights to come up and then hit start. And then wait 40 seconds for the exposure of your QTX emulsion. Okay, after your screen has exposed, you can hit the stop and reset on the timer. Go over to the exposure unit and turn off the light. Then you can take the weight off, take the foam out, flip the screen over, and take the tape off and your film off of the screen. Now that it's exposed, you wanna save your film. You're gonna need that for aligning it on press. So I keep this. Now you can take your screen over to the washout booth and hit it with the hose to expose and wash everything out. Take your screen out of the dark room over to the washout sink, place it inside. And the first thing you wanna do is take the hose and get a sponge super saturated and wet. I'll also spray the back of the screen and get that wet also. After I get the screen wet, what I do is I take the sponge that I have that is wet and on the back of the screen, I'll loosen up the emulsion slightly. Then what I do is I take the screen, I turn it around, and then I will spray with the hose back and forth and wash out all of my artwork. What you're looking for is wherever you had black, you should be able to see light through it. So you want to make sure that you can see light through all of your artwork. If there's any pink emulsion left in the artwork where it was black, then your stencil, when you go to print, it won't print through that area. So you need to clear out and check all of your artwork. Once you're done and everything looks good and it washes out, then you can take your screen outside and put it in the courtyard to dry out front. After you wash out your screen, find a sunny area in the courtyard. 
place your screen in the sun and then let the sun dry and cure everything. Once it's completely dry, then you can take it back in and you're ready to print.